Good morning, our friends and all our viewers around the world. It's another time together to listen to the word of God and to share in the beauty of his holiness. We want to thank God for today being another Sunday as the word of life will be reeling out from this pulpit. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great opportunity to be here again and speak your word and as well as my listener to listen to your word. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that every word that will be pronounced will mix with faith in the heart of your people to produce the desired results in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, we welcome all your comments and then we thank you for all of those that we have received over the time. Uh, it is a belief that the Lord, in his infinite mercy, will from time to time grant each and all of us, the listeners and the speaker, the, uh, the, the, the beauty and uh, the answers to our request as we listen. Today, um, we shall be meditating on the topic, your persistence, a little while, will break that resistance. I take that again. Your persistence, a little while, will break that resistance. Uh, the Bible reading is taken from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded by St. John's chapter 16 uh, from verses 12 through to 24. But the key verses are verse 21 and 24. So I read the King James Version. Verse 21 rightly puts at a woman when she is in travail had sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembered not more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. Verse 24, hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Brethren, Jesus Christ, as short introduction, Jesus Christ while teaching his disciples about his planned exit from this earth and its implications as recorded in John chapter 16 mentioned to his disciples a number of experiences they are to expect. Among those are persecution verses 1 to 4, gift of the Holy Spirit verses 5 to 14, he expounded along that line, assurances of comfort and victory from verses 16 to 23 and 23 to the end. Precisely verse 16 to 19, Jesus mentioned the phrase a little while seven times. I'm sure he didn't do that uh, per chance. In particular verse 16, Jesus said a little while and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. The idea behind the use of the phrase, a little while, is the point of focus here. In that statement, he emphasized the variability in the measure of time that the disciples will wait for the actualization of the desired victory. In this case, Jesus will be taken away from the disciples over a duration of time. Afterwards, Jesus will appear to them again for a while. The quantum of time not being stated. That is the time, the amount of time for over his, for which he would disappear and then the amount of time he would appear. Obviously, it was going to be 
over and intermittently it goes and then comes and appears to them. The little while is for a purpose. In verse 20, Jesus spoke in plain terms, in plain words, that the disciple will weep and lament for a little while, underscore little while. But in yet another little while, the pain will be turned into joy. Jesus was emphasizing persistence in prayers and in the reading and understanding internalization of the word of God. The dictionary meaning of persistence as described in the Dictionary of Oxford Languages states as thus, the fact of, that is persistence, is the fact of continuing in an opinion or a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. So, I brought you this morning three dividends of persistence in prayers. One, persistence in prayer until you wear out the resistance will ensure the release of the miraculous. That's number one. Number two, it will ensure the removal of the resistance that you're currently experiencing. And number three, it will bring about edification of the body of Christ. I take it again, release of, miracle, of the miraculous, number two, the removal of resistance, any resistance, and number three, for the edification of the body of Christ. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 to 15, we find the accounts of Elijah and Elijah. Elijah, Elijah continued along the course of his action. At that point, Elijah was going to be taken away. And Elijah, who has been under tutelage, was going to take over the mantle of that office. So it was time for that change of button, and it was not going to come easy. So at that point in time, Elijah knew what he wanted, and so he continued along that course of action in spite of words of discouragement from his colleagues at various instances and positions, as well as repeated opposition, suiting words from Elijah to repel him from witnessing that last moment when, El when he Elijah was going to be cut off because that moment was very critical. Elijah knew the difficult times were going to be for a while, a little while. So he remained focused until the resistances were worn off and the miraculous released unto him. Not minding the trauma and the uncertainty involved. You agree with me, in the course of that journey, there were a number of uncertainty. Elijah went from post to post, from city to city, and at each post, Elijah was receiving contradictory uh, messages, advice that he should not continue. The uncertainty was also there. He was not sure when that action was going to, that event was going to take place until the last moment. The devil is good at the use of instrumentalities such as uncertainty and trauma to rob believers of their miracles. But I tell you, Jesus prepared us well enough to anticipate this uncertainty and trauma. In John chapter 16, verse 20, 33, he says that tribulations are going to come, but we should be of good cheer. He has conquered the world. So there is a panacea. The panacea here is being of good cheer. Brethren, while hanging on your faith for victory, the victory that has been won for you at the cross of Calvary, you need to be of good cheer. To deal with uncertainty, Jesus prescribed that the trouble period is going to be for a little while. This means that you would only need to hang on for a short time. Brethren, be encouraged to continue to hang on until that moment of joy arrives. Though it may tarry, 
it will definitely come, as recorded in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3b. Again, in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 2, the Bible puts it right to us to be conscious of the host of witnesses while running the race of life. Brethren, it is very important because in the event of our failure, several many will be led astray. Daniel and his friends in the Babylon city persisted and came out victorious. Right there in Babylon, the king and several individuals were influenced to decide for the true God. Today, that testimony is a source of encouragement to millions of people facing trials, yet unborn though, as well. Should you fail to hold on, brother and sister, you will be discouraging the great cloud of witness, waiting to celebrate your victory, as well as learn from your experience. I encourage you this day to hold on, to persist until you wear out that resistance, for your victory is assured it will be delivered. Your testimony is needed for the work of the ministry, for perfecting of the saints, and as well as edifying the body of Christ. I want to tell you that there are a few points. I want to tell you a few points that may constitute barrier to your ability to persist in prayer. One, wait and sins, which easily beset us. Wait and sins are like little foxes, which the Bible records in Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15, as destroyers of the vineyard. Wait and sins will destroy your, your vineyard, will destroy your, 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 your fruits. Wait and sins are also considered as hindrances to your spiritual growth. They are potential amplifiers to your trauma as the waiting prolongs, thereby weakening your strength to continually run that race set before you with patience. However, constant spiritual growth lubricates your wheel or clog of gears as you muscle effort, pushing through resistances along your path of progress unto victory. Wait and sins watch them. Number two, loss of focus on Jesus Christ. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, the Bible admonishes us that to focus on Jesus. But in the case of a loss of focus on Jesus, the believer will fail to draw succor during critical periods and failure is assured. Loss of focus on Jesus is also synonymous to disconnection from Jesus, which is a guarantee for defeat. In John chapter 15, verse 4, your connection to Jesus at a time of tribulation is simply dwelling or internalizing and confessing the word of God as you press hard to breaking through that resistance. John chapter 15, verse 7, for those of us who are a little familiar with physics, there are laws that tell us as science and physics students that every material has its breaking point. Every opposition has its breaking point. I tell you, you are made up of, materi of, that, of material that can break any resistance as long as you remain focused on Jesus looking upon unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Jesus broke every resistance and then came out victorious. So you will come out victorious as well in Jesus. Loss of focus on Jesus will elongate a little while. That little while will be elongated beyond your, the period, beyond your ability to bear and you become sucked in. I'm sure you don't want to be sucked in Keep focus on Jesus, who is a perfect example, not on your pastor, not on your bishop, not on that book, not on that literature you read, but on Jesus, who has weathered it. He's a good example. He saw it 
from beginning to end. His testimony is the only testimony that is, that, that, that is qualified to be referred to and to be regarded as we walk through our own experience. Brothers and sisters, as, as I conclude, the occurrence of the miraculous is the desire of every believer. Pushing through trials of faith. You are not the only one. And you will, your case will not be an exception. But it requires persistence in prayer and repeated confessing the word while waiting. Although tribulation is certain, Jesus confirmed that. Nevertheless, the gift of the Holy Spirit is equally assured to bring the necessary comfort. Brethren, you've got that comfort. The Holy Spirit is there for you. While the promise of victory is your guarantee of the delivery of the spectacular. As you wade through the murky waters of life, be rest assured with Jesus on your side. Watching and praying, your breakthrough is certain. I look forward to your testimony someday because I am certain they will come. Please hold on for a little longer. God bless you.